Hey everyone, Joshua Kirk here with you once again, and now it's time for episode 167 of Album of the Day. It w and before we get into the review, uh, I would just like to talk about this shirt that I'm wearing right now. <coughs> Which, uh, the, the shirt I'm wearing uh, in this video, uh, I recently uh, went on a trip to Pittsburgh, and I... Uh, went to uh, this really cool museum that's uh, called the Carnegie Museum of Art and uh, yeah, like uh, this shirt I'm wearing uh, uh, it says uh, art makes me happy and of course it's got a cat on it uh, so so yeah just uh, letting you know this uh, really cool shirt that I'm wearing uh, but anyway let's get on to the review which today's band is uh, an instrumental band I think they're out of California. Uh, that's uh, been a pretty big part of kind of the underground movement of uh, artists under uh, the label Yep Rock Records out of California, out of out of North Carolina. Uh, guitar instrument. They're the guitar instrumental band known as Low Straight Jackets. Uh, they put out several records on Yep Rock and stuff like that, and doing their own like original songs as well as like some covers uh, putting their own twist on songs too um, which uh, this album that I'm gonna review today from them is the latter of those and it's their latest album which came out on May 19th of 2016 and the album is called What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Low Straight Jackets and uh, the title of the record is a play on a the uh, Nick Lowe composition known as What's So Funny About Pe about Peace, Love, and Understanding. Uh, so that's a sign. This record is a uh, uh, covers record of uh, Nick Lowe songs. Uh, so as you can see, there's all five band members on there, but then there's, there's also a picture of Nick Lowe right here. So that's a sign that this is a, uh, a Nick Lowe tribute album. Uh, which I think it's funny, uh, he's actually uh, doing a crossword puzzle on there. It's a lot there. Uh, anyway, here's the front cover. Really nice photographs of all the band members. It's sort of a play on the, the album cover for, uh, the, for Nick Lowe's debut album, Jesus of Cool, which is known as Jesus of Cool in uh, the UK, and uh, pure, pure pop for now people in the US. <laughs> anyway, there's the back. Of course, I have it on LP. Uh, there's 13 tracks that they cover from Nick Lowe, and uh, it's over 34 minutes. Uh, minutes, pretty short. Uh, all instrumental, um, but all very good. I will sort of get into more detail about this record later in the video. Um, and it's produced by a uh, Nick Lowe's current producer, who is Neil Brockbank, uh, I think recorded like uh, at a uh, in Mar Vista, California, at the Pow Wow Fun Room, as well as some additional recording at Gold Top Studio in London, which is uh, where uh, Nick Lowe is from. And the what's interesting is that it actually says in the liner notes that the idea for this album was actually hatched at the Seashore Motel in Santa Monica, California. And the inspiration for this album came from this band did a few holiday tours with Nick Lowe because Nick Lowe put out the holiday record in 2013, Quality Street, um, Street on Yep Rock. So that kind of inspired the band to create sort of a tribute record to him. And uh, anyway, there's a... DLP, this is a uh, side one. And then uh, here we have uh, side two. Yeah. Yeah, just giving you a, a better viewing of side one. And I actually bought this at a sound garden in Baltimore, one of my favorite uh, record stores to go to, but they didn't have it, so 
I actually asked them to order this for me, which they did. Uh, and like uh, one of the, uh, uh, and like one day, and like one summer day in June, uh, I went to Soundgarden and uh, I got this record that they had ordered. Um, and uh, so that's the vinyl. That's my vinyl copy of the uh, uh, Low Straight Jackets Nick Lowe tribute album known as What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Low Straight Jackets. So uh, this is going to be, this video is going to be a shout out to the Up Rock since they released this. <laughs> now, covers records definitely is not an easy thing to do. Uh, I mean, uh, it can be uh, really easy to do your own rendition of one song. But it's really hard to make a great cover of a song. Uh, but considering how unique the sound of Low Straight Jackets is, I thought it was cool to see them sort of take Nick Lowe's very underrated but very beautiful melodies and uh, sort of make it make them their own it was definitely very cool. Because I knew that the band definitely had enough talent and enough skills to really kind of uh, put their own twist on uh, these, uh, uh, on these uh, classic compositions that were written by pretty much the godfather of indie rock. Um, <clears throat> father of indie rock. Um, and uh, you've got pretty much a, a, little, a little bit of the best from pretty much his entire catalog. They don't just cover his old stuff here. They cover a little bit of his more recent stuff as well because Nick Lowe is the kind of artist that even his more recent stuff still manages to be very strong in terms of the, in terms of the writing and the production and the way it sounds and uh, and how unique his voice is and stuff. So like they cover songs from like uh, Jesus of Cool all the way up to Old Magic, uh, which I think is interesting. Uh, even though they do a cover of by far one of Nick Lowe's first like really well-known compositions, which was uh, a Brinsley Schwartz song, uh, What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Understanding. And uh, the rendition that Low Straight Jackets do here on this record is definitely very beautiful. Like, they take sort of the, the classic sort of uh, rock ballad, melodic rock ballad, and uh, sort of turn it into this song that's like, very folky with like some bongos and uh, some jankly acoustic guitars and stuff. Uh, like I'm definitely hearing shots of 12 string guitar on here. Um, here, and I think the song is definitely very beautiful. That like kind of gnarly baritone riff is definitely very nicely sort of, uh, very nicely sort of uh, mirrors the melody of the vocal from the uh, original uh, performed version of the song. Version of the song, and uh, once uh, the higher uh, range of tone hits, it definitely uh, does sound really beautiful over uh, some over some steady organs and percussion and stuff like that. It's definitely a very nice uh, rendition of uh, uh, Nick Lowe's. Uh, Oh, it's it's definitely a really nice rendition here, and of course they do cover some of the Jesus for cool Jesus of cool pure pop for now people songs, um, like they cover, like they actually cover some songs that are like included like on pure pop for now people as well as included on a expanded reissue of Jesus of cool uh, released by Yep Rock, which would be songs like. Shake and Pop, uh, Rollers Show, um, Show, and uh, Heart of the City. Uh, like, Shake and Pop is the opener of this record, and uh, definitely a really nice way to open up the record. Uh, it sort of got this very kind of raucous, sort of like, a, a, like, like definitely got sort of this raucous, carefree, sort of, uh, very laid back sort of surf rock feel to it that I do uh, really like a lot and does a good job of pretty much hooking you into uh, what the album will offer to you. Um, for to you. And it's got some very unusual touches like uh, the different 
percussion in the background as well as some kind of like honky tonk piano uh, playing over the kind of uh, fast like uh, like like the kind of fast like 50s uh, rock inspired riff pretty much uh, and then we have uh, Roller's Show which I think is definitely very nicely covered on here as well which features uh, uh, which features uh, these sort of uh, low and high responding guitars, which I do think are really cool, as well as well as all kinds of different hand percussion. The unusual touch of castanets is definitely very uh, uh, beautifully incorporated in there. Hopefully, uh, very beautifully incorporated in there, and it's definitely got kind of a there's a bit of a rockabilly feel that. Uh, this band actually adds to songs like this and shake and shake and pop that I do think is really nice. And of course, and heart of the city is the closer of this record. Now, while this uh, rendition probably has more similarities to the original version than a majority of cuts here do, I do think it is uh, definitely a very nice closer for the record, and uh, it's still definitely sees them putting their own spin. Like, and I thought it was interesting how they incorporated a really cool drum solo towards the end, as well as, of course, using the guitar uh, to uh, sort of recreate the melody otherwise created by Nick Lowe's vocal on a, or the original recordings. <clears throat> original recordings. I like how that pretty much happens for every cut on the record. Uh, the melody that was achieved by Nick Lowe's voice is uh, uh, portrayed via a guitar riff, which I do think is really cool. Mm -hmm. Really cool, and uh, and of course uh, they doing, and then of course they do have on here uh, one of by far Nick Lowe's like biggest hit, which is the song "Cruel to Be Kind," and is like that's like his only like big hit here in the states because uh, he's like huge in England. But yet, like, here in the States, he's still a guy that, like, uh, if I mention his name right now, you probably would have never heard of it, probably. Um, but I, I love, but of course, Cruel to Be Kind definitely is one of, one of Lowe's greatest songs of all time. And I love what Lowe's Straight Jackets have done to this song, turning it into this really beautiful, like, acoustic ballad, lit almost, uh, that's like a... Like, I will admit, like, the original version is a little more playful, uh, and Low Straight Jacket's version is maybe a little more kind of on the somber side, but still, on, but still like, very uh, beautifully put together, put together uh, with that kind of mournful riff, which I do think sounds uh, really nice on there. And I think the part of the song that they especially did justice was definitely the... Uh, the chorus, uh, chorus, the combination of uh, the harmonized guitars and organ and the kind of steady bass and drums is just like, uh, they keep time really nicely and and they just sound downright beautiful so it's definitely uh, quite a, uh, just a, a revelation to listen to. Uh, definitely making it really just a, a revelation to listen to. Uh, and definitely something that I think would be highly approved of the man himself. So it's actually kind of ironic. He's credited as a backing vocalist in the liner notes here. Um, uh, no Nick and the Knife songs are on here, but they do have some songs from the Abominable Showman on here, which uh, they include the uh, song from that album known as Raging Eyes, which definitely... Uh, very catchy uh, classic song uh, from Nick Lowe right there, which I, I do think uh, that Low Straight Jacket's rendition of that song definitely uh, does sound like really nice. It kind of is cover similar ground to like their rendition of uh, uh, What's So Funny About Peace, uh, where uh, it's like they turn a pop rock song into like this kind of folky acoustic ballad with very minimal percussion and an acoustic riff sort of making the foundation, uh, but they do create some uh, really uh, nice electric riffs, uh, really sort of uh, doing the whole like hookiness of the song justice, even though 
This track is probably my least favorite one on the record because uh, I feel that it just ends abruptly for whatever reason. Uh, and I have no problem with that considering uh, the original version of the song is really short as well. But like it, you know, uh, considering how kind of abruptly it ends kind of leaves it feeling maybe a little unsatisfying in my opinion. Opinion, but still nonetheless definitely a great uh, track. Track, uh, and then of course, uh, like, uh, so I've already mentioned, uh, like, how about, uh, we, uh, go on to, uh, uh, like, uh, another track that I want to mention is, uh, they, they do cover, uh, Half a Boy and Half a Man, which is the opening track off the record, Nick Lowe and his Cowboy Outfit, which is, uh, you, uh, if you've heard of that song before, it's like this very kind of fun, beachy, kind of like organ driven, like, like organ driven piece of surf rock and surf rock, uh, and like, uh, but low straight jackets does it a little differently, sort of making these sort of Latin inspired guitar riffs, sort of, uh, sort of recreating that melody otherwise created by organ, uh, which I do think, uh, uh, the way they uh, used the riffs in the song and how they're sort of like Latin surf rock and like pop rock all at the same time are just uh, really awesome in my opinion. Awesome in my opinion. And then of course uh, we do get some really nice sort of like uh, a summery piano and some and the organ is more kind of subtle in this version but does sound uh, really nice and of course some really uh, some of the best drums on this record come from this track and also you can tell the band is just having fun I mean at one point you can hear the drummer whose name is Chris Sprague just uh, making these weird kind of vocalized sounds uh, at one point in the song sort of showing the band's ability to just you know kind of have fun and just uh, n not really have a care in the world necessarily. Um, uh, the Party of One song, All Men Are, All Men Are Liars, is like one of my favorite uh, cuts on the record. Uh, cuts on the record. Like, what's interesting is how the tempo of the song has changed in this version. I mean, uh, the original version of the song was like a lot slower and had kind of an Americana, alt-country kind of vibe to it, uh, with like call and response backup vocals going on and stuff, but they make the song, they, they make the song faster in terms of the tempo, which I do think is really nice, and nice as uh, they do create some really unique uh, guitar riffs on the song, like nearly every track on here has just a really, uh, has a riff with just a unique personality to it that I do really appreciate. And then of course I do love the extra instrumentation, the kind of, uh, like the kind of screeching organ in the background, as well as uh, the xylophone uh, phone, like uh, the uh, extra instrumentation, I think is definitely, I think um, gives the song a really unique twist that I just uh, can't help but admire whenever I listen to it. For I listen to it. Uh, then we have the Impossible Bird uh, song, uh, known as I Live on a Battlefield, which may be in, like, my top five uh, covers on this record. I mean, this, I, I mean, they definitely did this song some, you know, much, uh, uh, some, uh, much, uh, uh, pleasure, uh, justice, as, uh, they do, uh, create this kind of, like, as they do create this kind of, like, mournful, but at the same time, very much hopeful, kind of, guitar riff, uh, which I think just sounds uh, downright gorgeous, in my opinion. It's downright gorgeous, in my opinion, like uh, one of the uh, best riffs on the entire record. Record, And the rest of the instrumentation definitely uh, is done really well. Well, like uh, the, the bass sound, the bass and the drums sound really nice, and then you get some unusual touches, like uh, it's a is like uh, some like uh, kind of clicking organ 
as well as the odd kind of spooky sound of a vibraphone is definitely uh, very well incorporated into the mix as well. It's definitely uh, a true highlight for me on the record. Heard uh, You Inspire Me is a song off of uh, song off of Dig My Mood that I think they did really nicely on here. Uh, sort of turning it into this really like psychedelic, soulful kind of ballad, uh, which uh, definitely is uh, very cool and just has this very sexy uh, sort of muted guitar riff uh, sort of leading the song. And it's definitely got kind of a jazzy feel to the bass line, the drums, the organ, as well as going full on jazz instrumentation with uh, the usage of a vibraphone again. Uh, for a phone again. And also, uh, but one pretty uh, unique uh, sounding part of the song would have to be the bridge, which features this kind of, like, uh, which features this weird, like, uh, very kind of psychedelic uh, guitar solo, which sounds like it's kind of like somewhat like backwards on the tape or something, or maybe given the Vera speed treatment or something. It's just, like, it sounds so, like, uh, cool, and it definitely, uh, sounds, uh, very much, like, psychedelic, which I definitely do think, uh, the band's music definitely has, uh, does take a lot of inspiration from, like, psychedelic music as well. Um, like, music as well. Uh, uh, then we have Lately I've Let Things Slide, which is, uh, uh, one of the uh, cuts off of The Convincer, which is another song that on the uh, Nick Lowe version was a lot slower, but on here it's like uh, it's sped up a little bit, even though it does sound like uh, equally as uh, intimate and folky. Uh, uh, folky, but like I love how the riff is sort of inspired by like like a, a riff you'd probably hear in mariachi music or something like that. Mm. G music as well. And again, another song jazzed up with additional instrumentation um, of xylophone, piano, organ, and even uh, a kind of buzzy stylophone can be heard in the background as well. Uh. Ground. Uh, and, uh, like, pretty much the last two songs that I'm going to talk about here, one, the ones I pretty much haven't talked about yet, are they cover two songs from the old magic on this record. They cover the songs um, Check Out Time and I Read A Lot. Um, a lot. The song Check Out Time is definitely one of my favorite, like, covers on here because they really do put their own twist on that song and really make it their own. They try to make it sound as if uh, they just, uh, it's something they wrote. Like, they take the uh, sort of uh, folksy ballad, uh, sort of about Nick Lowe's sort of, uh, uh, like, growing up and stuff, and sort of kind of looking back at his life and stuff, um, stuff and turns it into, like, this... And, and turns it into sort of this like tropical sort of uh, and gives it more of a tropical faster flair right here with all the different like weird hand percussion there's like some bongos and maracas and stuff goes and stuff and also uh, like uh, it has this really cool sort of uh, laid back riff that definitely does remind me of like uh, of uh, of like lay of of like laying on the beach or something like that, but definitely in a good way. Huh. Definitely in a good way, and I think it's interesting how, uh, and, and I also love uh, the way the bridge is done here. Like, uh, like uh, those notes in the bridge are definitely uh, very uh, well done. It shows that they're done by a band just full of talent and skills. Uh, hmm. So full of talent and skills, and also they do replace the instrumental part with a pretty cool like drum and percussion solo, which I think is uh, nicely done. And the last track I'm like uh, uh, the last track I'm gonna highlight before um, I head out uh, today is uh, the uh, 
is uh, the track I read a lot, which is definitely yet another favorite of mine uh, here on this record, because they really did give that song its own spin. Not only is the main riff nice, but also the very unusual touches of uh, extra instruments is definitely very cool. The uh, Spanish, uh, like uh, that very uh, beautiful nylon string guitar solo, string guitar solo, as well as uh, as well as all the interesting little hand percussion, uh, cushion, like one percussion instrument I'm hearing on the song is like one that I can't even like think of the name on, they think of the name of. And then also the use of organ as well. Uh, but, uh, but then it also does have these really odd sort of warbles of theremin in the background, which I do think I, I definitely uh, instantly gravitated towards because uh, I don't know about you, but I'm a sucker for the theremin. Uh, so yeah, like I kind of uh, talked about the tracks like in order of which they were released on different Nick Lowe records as opposed to like uh, the order in which they appear in the track list, but, uh, but like, yeah, but like, I definitely do recommend checking out this record. I mean, I know this is a covers record. I know some cover records can be just really kind of boring, uh, but this is a record that, like, uh, there have actually been a couple of covers records in the past couple of years where the band really put their own spin on them and actually really wowed me with them. I mean, what Shu Shu did with that uh, covers album of the Twin Peaks soundtrack in 2016, Low Straight Jackets did for me with this Nick Low tribute album, even though they both come from really different worlds of music. Um, so yeah, definitely an 8 out of 10 on this record. Just like an amazing album, and don't let the whole like covers album sort of cause a red flag for you, because. Uh, this band really does uh, take Nick Lowe's masterful melodies and really uh, sort of treats them as if their own, as if uh, they're their own compositions, which I do think is definitely uh, wonderful. Um, so that's my review for the Nick Lowe tribute album from Low Straight Jackets, known as What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Low Straight Jackets, and I'll see you for episode 168.